Good evening and welcome to a special select board meeting here in Deerfield on 10-23-2018 at 6 p.m. in the municipal offices in South Deerfield. Uh, we're going to have a wastewater system analysis workshop. Uh, the first one this evening is going to be facilitated by Wendy Foxman, our town administrator. And I believe the sewer study committee wants to open their meeting as well. Uh, good evening. This is a uh, October 23rd, uh, 2018 uh, meeting of the Sewer Study Committee uh, meeting with the uh, Select Board and have the same agenda to um, listen to Dave Prickett Consulting for the Wastewater Ma Systems Assessment Workshop and um, with Wendy Foxman being a facilitator. Um, can I just ask Jeff and, and everybody, John? Jack, can you guys come up here and just bring your chairs up so that we, um, or move up closer so we can all have conversations together? Thank you so much. I'm not, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but um, I want you to know I really am appreciative that you came, and um, so that's why I want to make sure that you feel included and part of the conversation. Thank you very much. Trevor, thank you. So I offered to be the facilitator in order to allow everyone to uh, participate and not worry about managing their meetings. I'll manage the meeting. <laughs> so really what we'll do is just follow the agenda um, with um, Dave Prickett and his uh, colleagues um, presenting the information, then discussion. It looks like we, everyone who's here, other than staff, are members of the two committees. So um, if someone comes to the public, I, I have them speaking after the committees discuss and ask questions. So unless there's something else, I think we can proceed with the presentation. Well, okay. Thank you. Thank you Dave. All right, so um, what we'll try to do tonight is get through as quickly as possible the, the formal part of the presentation and then get into the meat of the conversation and questions that come out of it, which this is a workshop. I'm going to... just want you to introduce yourself. I will definitely introduce okay. the team. Do you guys want to start off by introducing yourselves as representatives of the, the town and the task force? Keith Milne, Chief Operator for Treatment Plants. Kevin Scarborough, Superintendent. And I'm uh, Dave Prickett with DPC Engineering. To my right, uh, James Rivers is here. Tony DeSimone, who many of you know, uh, is also part of the team. Uh, Tony and his family got that nasty cold bronchial thing so we kept him under quarantine this evening but uh, he'll certainly Thank be you. available for any follow-up questions yeah absolutely you didn't have to ride in the car with him <laughs> okay so you know basically this was a an asset management project so tonight what we're going to do is just touch on um, our kind of high level observations get into some details and then we'll come back with questions so we'll talk about the project goals uh, kind of recap those to set the tone, uh, talk about how we evaluated the assets at your two treatment plants and your collection system, identified capital needs, and really what this project was all about was trying to sort those out, prioritize them, and rank them to come up with not only a capital plan, but a capital plan that can be implemented over a series of a number of years uh, in an, as affordable a manner as possible. That was the primary goal. And we'll, we'll show you some of the economics that came out of that relative to funding and finance options, what it's going to mean in terms of annual costs for your sewer users, et cetera, and uh, talk about next steps. So the project itself, our charge when we started this, um, and this has been in the making for a couple of years, this culmination of this, evaluated the needs, quite simply, prioritized the assets, and develop a wastewater capital plan. That was the charge of the project. Um, the goals specifically, we needed to develop a plan um, that could address these needs as quickly and, and financially as possible. Um, and we needed something that was going to be fair and equitable. That's always been a vision, certainly, of the, the select board, but also from the, uh, the sewer committee task force over the years and listening to input from that group. And uh, we, we put together, we were able to put together a, a, a group of, of staff, uh, Kevin and Keith, Wendy and Trevor, um, I'll call it kind of a, a little focus group to try to keep things moving in between the public uh, portion or the bigger portion of the project. And we got kind of a late jump on this, getting the contract going. We first met back in March and you know we went through the, 
uh, the spring period, getting the appropriations together, getting the agreement in place. But um, a tremendous amount of credit should be given to Keith and the plant staff for accommodating a very aggressive schedule. I mean, we compressed three months of work into about a four to six week period. And you know that for you, those of you that came to the meetings bright and early at the treatment plant. But um, I certainly want to give thanks to Keith. They have plenty of things to do over there. So accommodating that was great. One of the other key elements of this project that we talked about uh, last, last spring was we want to make sure we had built on past projects so we weren't reinventing the wheel, that we were using existing resources, that we were using existing staff knowledge, uh, both town staff and DPC staff. We wanted to minimize redundancy, keep costs down, minimize the schedule extent, and I believe we've been able to do that to this point. Um, now our goal, our vision is to try to merge the recommendations of this project with the town's overall uh, financial vision um, and the annual budget season, the timing, we're back on track to try, to try to merge those paths. So when James flips to the next chart here, one of the things we wanted to kind of put in perspective, we're gonna talk about some, some, some big numbers. These are real numbers for the community. Um, wastewater uh, capital needs are not inexpensive as I'm sure you've you know, come to know over the past several years. But to start, I think it's important to try to understand what is your wastewater system worth today? So we took a look at your two treatment plants and your two collection systems, Old Deerfield and South Deerfield. And if you were to construct all of those today with public money, if you had no infrastructure in the ground, it cost you somewhere in the order of $125 million to physically construct your wastewater system. So you have a, a huge asset. It's probably one of the biggest assets in the community. Um, yes, it's aged in some places, and yes, it's depreciated from an accounting standpoint but it's a, it's a huge asset to, to deal with. And uh, when we start looking at some of the needs, uh, this may help to put things into perspective. I should note that when we show many of these tables and figures, there's a lot of data in there that we won't hit on in the overall presentation, but they're certainly there to come back and drill down into if folks have specific questions. So we're, next step is we're gonna go through what, were the, what was the process that we used to physically go through the, the details of, of, of the treatment plants and the collection system. So we'll start with the treatment plants. So for both plants, uh, we started off by, by visiting both uh, with Keith and, and his staff. Uh, we visually inspected all of the assets and equipment, um, electrical, structural, uh, concrete, buildings, et cetera, anything that was um, visible. So tanks that were underwater, they can't be taken out of service. We, we use what we see above ground to try to correlate those to what the conditions may be below ground. We then came up with a, um, a table for each of the two treatment plants that I'm going to say was probably on the order of 20 pages long, 11 by 17, where literally every asset and sub asset for the plant. So uh, for, you know, uh, aeration system, it would have tanks, it would have mixers, it would have um, you know, concrete, uh, weirs, et cetera. Literally every element was, was viewed, observed, quantified, and then, as we'll talk about in a, se in a second, was prioritized. So we identified the bottlenecks, right? What are the limitations and the current needs? This is where things got, um, on the next page where we talk about ranking the assets, this is where it becomes subjective. This is where input from the team was critical. So. In a similar kind of smaller workshop, what we did was we said, what are the things that are important to Deerfield? So we literally all wrote these down, all of the members of the group that were, that were on this task force. Um, we had many items that were overlapped significantly. And then there were items that were, you know, perhaps more <clears throat> important to one person or another, depending on their personal drives. But we ended up coming up with a list of uh, these criteria um, that we then assigned a range of potential scores to each of these. And you can see that this is how we started to shuffle the deck and try to use a, a semi-scientific method to try to quantify uh, what's going on at Deerfield. So next slide. Um, this is where we first came out for the South Deerfield plant. What we did was we tried to sort things on a liquid and solids flow path through the plant. So starting from the front, working to, your, working to the back. Um, we developed an opinion of probable project cost. Um, this is pretty high altitude level cost, but really the decisions we're trying to make in this project are how do we shake this out to make things affordable? Um, 
whether a specific element is 1.7 million or 1.4 or 2.2 really doesn't change the conversation uh, and some decisions can be made based on this level of data. So at the South Deerfield plant, uh, we estimate that you have just under $16 million of capital needs, okay? So that's a significant number. Um, you can imagine now we started scratching our heads saying, how do we make those numbers work? So what we did was we played around with a timeline. We looked at, can we do this all at once? And that was a quick and hard no. Trevor can attest to that when we the looked at no. that number. Uh, when faced with, you know, potentially doubling the rates overnight uh, to do a project as, as, as a single phase was just not uh, affordable. So we said, let's, let's start by figuring out how many phases this might work in. And from a construction standpoint, um, you know, I, ideally you stretch this thing out as long as you can, but the reality of it is, is you can't. If you're uh, going in for surgery and you're working on something, you may have to push something else out of the way to get to that organ. So really what it came down to is we were able to push things out to a maximum of, of, of four phases for the overall project. And you'll see that South Deerfield only has work in phases one and three. And as we kind of pull together Old Deerfield and the collection system, you'll see why that was a recommendation of the group. So we start with an initial phase at South Deerfield of 9.3 million and a phase three upgrade of uh, 6.7 million. These are all current day cost, fiscal year 2019. So that's the other element that comes into play when we stretch things out over a long period of time is when we defer, costs go up, but it does afford some financial flexibility. On to Old Deerfield. Um, Old Deerfield in a very similar manner. Uh, you see the same number of kind of rows and, and columns as you did on the previous table. Uh, Old Deerfield has capital needs of about $9.4 million. Um, it's roughly like on a flow standpoint, a 70-30 split in terms of the, the percentage of the system served. Um, roughly 70% of your system is served by the collection system and South Deerfield treatment plant. About 30% of your sewers and your uh, treatment plant, uh, or, sorry, your customers are served by the Old Deerfield plant. So on to trying to put together a phasing sequence for things. Um, what's obviously not visible in these slides is the several iterations that we went through to try to come up with a plan that was as balanced as possible. But you can see South Deerfield we had in phases one and three, and Old Deerfield we're showing in phases two and four. Again, all current day costs. Um, not surprisingly to, to, to many of you that have, may have worked on other municipal buildings and facilities, that first upgrade after a long period of time always seems to be the lion's share. It, mm -hmm. it's, hard to, it's hard to pull much out of there. We have to hit the heart and the lungs, and those are generally, as Keith can attest to, the most ex expensive uh, parts of the project from a capital standpoint. Yeah. On to the sewer system. So you may recall when we talked in the spring and uh, early summer that there was a parallel project that was ongoing. So the state had a, a series of II requirements. Uh, we've been assisting Deerfield for two years on that. The second phase uh, was recently completed over the past couple of weeks. But we went out, we did manhole inspection, sonar testing for the entire sewer system as part of this project. So you have a baseline for the uh, qualitative and quantitative conditions that exist within your sewer system. Um, this allows us to, in a similar manner, but slightly different drivers, start to quantify the areas in the collection system that are uh, of, of highest need. So on the sewer system, it basically comes down to pipes and manholes, right? I mean, you've got one pump station and one force main. Um, those elements were excluded from this project for simplicity. Uh, you have parallel efforts going on in there. Uh, but basically what we tried to do was just say, the things that impact the collection system are structural needs, uh, II, infiltration, inflow, and I think we've kind of covered that in, in past workshops, leaky pipes and, and manholes. Um, and then percent of system served, right? So you have, you have a lot of assets. We tried to put a tremendous amount of weight on those assets that convey the majority of the flow. Right. So all things being equal, if South Deerfield and Old Deerfield plants had similar capital needs, South Deerfield serves 70% of the system. So when you're trying to prioritize money and put things in a timeline, that's what we did. Same thing with the pipes, and we've got some graphics back here that we can refer to on the boards for the sewer system. 
If you've got a trunk line that serves 100% of the South Deerfield system and it has defects, that's obviously going to be an elevated capital need. If you have a residential subdivision that has a couple of rough manholes but it only serves 12 houses, I mean, the reality of it is, is the way we handle money from a municipal standpoint, that moves to the bottom of the list. So that's ultimately what we tried to do. A slight difference in the collection system, and this is pretty typical of where most utilities are going, is we're finding it more economical and affordable to tackle collection system work on an annual basis through much smaller projects. It doesn't require that we build tanks, um, put in expensive equipment. Sewer rehab repair replacement is, is relatively efficient. Cost effective can be done in small pieces. So to balance out the magnitude of the capital needs for the two plants, what we did was we came up with a capital plan uh, where we allocated an, uh, uh, an amount of dollars based on the condition of the pipe each year to each sewer system. So if James flips to the next slide. Mm -hmm. In essence, what we did here is we carried, based on our interpretation of the data, about $200,000 a year for the South Deerfield collection system and about $100,000 a year for the Old Deerfield collection system. And each of these phases, as we'll kind of go to in a second, turned into about a three-year window. That's a lot to take in. I appreciate you holding off on the questions. We're, we're getting there. So this next slide here shows everything put into one table. So you had three rows, right? You have South Deerfield plant, Old Deerfield plant, and the collection system. And what you can see here is that you've got about $28.9 million in current uh, wastewater, need, or wastewater needs in current day costs, I should say. And based on each of those four phases, you can see what the dollar value is from left to right. We still haven't assigned years yet in this table, but this is starting to put things in perspective. Okay. I keep saying we as we did through this. Uh, James is our kind of financial modeler, so he's over there probably rolling his eyes saying, you mean me. Right. But uh, ultimately, this is, this is what the team did. So um, we settled into a 12 and a half, 13 year cycle to try to make this balanced. So we included fiscal 19 um, as kind of the transition year from this project to the capital plan. And then we had basically three years for each project. So if you take each phase in a nutshell, Presumably year one is kind of design or planning design permitting. And then years two and three, we split the debt across those two years evenly. Um, not an exact science. And the reality is, is most of the debt service falls a little later in the cycle. But for planning purposes, this is a, this is a good place to start. And it's conservative. Interesting thing here, you saw 28.9 million on the previous page, right? For all four phases, current day costs. Mm -hmm. When we stretch things out to a 13 year program, and we escalate them out there based on anticipated inflation, we're at just under $37 million cost. So 13 years is a long time. I mean, there's a lot of compounded 3 and 4% increases that can happen. For those of us that have been fortunate enough to have multiple houses over the years and mortgage rates at different, you know, interest factors, um, it's kind of like the game. Do I take a 15-year mortgage? Do I take a 30-year mortgage? Um, Sometimes you pay more to have lower costs per month or per year up front. All right, this is, where things get, uh, this is where things get more challenging, right? The rubber meets the road. I try to figure out how the heck do we pay for uh, $37 million in capital needs over 13 years. So you have a cash flow plan, and you have users that are going to pay you costs to recover those. The next question is what funding and finance options do we have? Um, we have the conventional loans um, that I'm sure you've used for municipal projects. Deerfield has a very good credit rating. We have the Mass uh, DEP SRF program, which is a 20-year loan at 2% interest rate. 100% loan, though, no grant. Um, the next one is USDA, uh, Department of Agriculture, Rural Development. Um, that option continues to be the most favorable for Deerfield uh, relative to the balance between long-term low-interest loans and significant grant elements. It's, it's probably the only uh, real financial solution that allows us to, to make this um, affordable uh, in the eyes of most residents. And I'll say that because affordability is completely subjective. It's ultimately up to you and the stewards of the town to decide that. But we're trying to identify the, I use the term the box. What's the box we're working in? What's the range of costs that we're going to see? So we took USDA, best case, 45% grant. 
40-year note, about two, two and a half percent interest right now. And then we took the conventional SRF financing. So we're confident that we can go get SRF uh, funding should you want it. It's a big pool of money from the state trust, um, readily available. Generally more attractive for cities that aren't USDA eligible. But if we, uh, if we, if we flip on here, we'll kind of see where this is headed. And before we get into some of the graphics, just a recap to where we were on sewer user fee studies over the past couple of years. Your budget has four elements. Um, every uh, water sewer budget has four elements. You have your O&M costs, right? That's how much it costs Keith and Kevin to run the system. You have your debt service for projects you've already completed. So those are loans that you're paying off for past work. You have new capital, right, slash debt service, future debt service. So that's what we're talking about tonight. That's where the rates go up as a result of this. And the last one is reserve. So it's pretty clear to me. I mean, we've had some pretty um, intense conversations over the years about finances and economics. But when you look back on the last three years, you've done exactly what we had hoped you would do, was you would slowly get your rates up to where the point was this wouldn't be so dramatic when you implement a capital program. So you now have a, a much more healthy budget. You have a much more stable reserve fund that you built up over the years. And you're well positioned um, from an underwriting standpoint to go get an, a, a, a significant uh, grant from USDA. We'll come back to that one for a second because that underwriting element is something that we shouldn't dismiss. Sometimes an investment up front means that we can save a whole lot of money on an annual basis when you actually get the, the grant loan split from USDA. Sewer rate structure, we have kept for this analysis, we've kept it exactly like it is right now. So you've got your 200 bucks or $100 per billing period per customer that I think you call it like a service fee or a base fee. We've kept that the same. We haven't made any changes. Um, we've also kept the, the same fee structure, uh, fixed rate. Right now you're $10 per thousand gallons of usage. So we've escalated that rate to offset the revenue needs that we need to bring in but we haven't made changes to the rate structure. And I will just pause here uh, because this was brought up in the spring that when we had updated the financial model, um, Kevin and Keith broke out all of the costs in last year's budget between South Deerfield and Old Deerfield. This isn't super scientific, but the best we can in terms of where bills came from and where resources were utilized. And it was within a, a few percent. So one of the questions was brought up is, was the current rate system fair and equitable? Was Old Deerfield subsidizing South Deerfield? Was South Deerfield subsidizing Old Deerfield? And the short answer was no, it was equitable. So if I said the split was 70-30 and the data came back as 33-67, I mean, it was literally that close. So had it come back and it was 50-50 or 80-20, I would have said no, but within 5% on both ends, it felt to me like that was enough of a reality check. That's pre-capital, right? So that's another conversation you could come back to later, but that's before you spend any money. But dollars per EDU on both sides were relatively equal. All right, now it gets fun. So this next series of figures, and it, it takes a little, little while for everybody to kind of get their bearings on here, but Vertical axis on the left is total uh, wastewater cost per year. Horizontal axis is fiscal years from fiscal year 19 to fiscal year 31. The blue bars represent conventional financing for that proposed four phase project over 12 years. So I don't wanna say worst case scenario, but that's the top end of the box that we talked about. The orange bars, and uh, James likes to humor me by giving me some Syracuse colors here from my alma mater, so. That's, uh, that's why we went with that. But the, uh, the orange bar represents the, um, the USDA scenario of 45% grant over 40 years. So that's the range of, of annual costs that we're looking at on an annual basis. If we flip to the next page, I should note that based on input we received from you, this includes the debt service for 75% of capital. The other 25% of the capital is my understanding from the town's practices, by whatever, whether it's a bylaw or regulation, it would be on the general fund. Yep. And we'll need to do a little math to figure out what that means for mill rate and everything else. We haven't gotten there yet. This next slide represents what, is the, what are the annual costs per household. 
you know, we throw numbers around like 10, 20, 30 million. They're big numbers, but total numbers don't really matter. They matter from a bonding capacity, but ultimately the only thing that matters is what are people going to pay? What are residences going to pay? What are businesses going to pay? So we broke it out on an EDU or equivalent dwelling basis. This is the same data as the previous chart, same bearings vertically, but it's dollars per year for wastewater per EDU. Same years to the left and right. One thing we added on here was a green dotted line from left, uh, lower left to upper right. This represents a projection of where the average annual statewide sewer cost is and will likely go. So we've looked in our lens going back and we've projected going forward. It's our best guess as to where things are headed from a, from a statewide standpoint. So right now, you're below the statewide average and median. That's a good thing. If you don't get a significant grant and loan, you're on the other side on the blue curve, right? If you do get the USDA uh, maximum grant allocation, you're, you're not only below now, but you're well below at the end of that 13-year run. So you continue to stay well ahead of that curve. Benchmarking is great. It can even make you feel really good or really bad in a hurry. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day, though. I mean, your utility is your utility. We can't change the number of customers you have overnight. So, And then this next figure represents, you know, I tend to think of things as what I pay for bills per month. Uh, this represents monthly wastewater costs per household. So this initial projection shows that right now you're at about 64 bucks per month per household for wastewater. And under the orange scenario, you get out to about $100 per month for wastewater, which, again, affordability is completely subjective. But, you know, in comparison to cell phone bills and Comcast bills or whatever the local cable provider is up here, um, I, I think it's, it's in the order of magnitude for what people would, you know, start to consider um, as an affordable plan for major capital needs. All right. So just trying to recap... Um, what we learned so far is, you know, we believe your current rate, sewer rate structure pre-capital is fair and equitable. Um, you have similar unit costs, as we mentioned, between Old Deerfield, South Deerfield. Uh, grants are king. So if we can put grants on the table um, for phases or overall for the project, it's going to make a huge uh, impact on affordability. And 13 years, about as far as we could stretch this out, right? I think at our previous workshop, Wendy, we started off at a nine or 10 year window mm -hmm. and it was, it was marginal. Uh, so we felt like we had to go from three phases to four. Uh, so that's what we've been doing for the last week and a half. And you can see from going from 29 million to 37 million that the cost of kicking the can is almost worse than taking on the debt. You know, interest rates are pretty low right now. Who knows what's gonna happen in a couple of years, but um, construction inflation is far outpacing general inflation. Um, I know there's some of you that have a construction background and there's things that we just can't control uh, in the construction environment, fuel, concrete, everything. Labor seems to be one of the relatively stable ones. So next steps, uh, first one's tonight. Um, you're going to be contemplating, as I understand it, a, a rate hearing tomorrow and this, I think, kind of get you in transition from wherever you've been in discussions from the, the 19 budget as approved to, to what might happen as a transition for the rest of this year into 20. Um, but we've, we've ID'd a, uh, a rate uh, that we can talk about a little later at 1175 that um, provides a good transition from where you are now to where you could be if you advance the project. Um, it allows some, for some follow-up uh, planning, engineering, uh, and most importantly, loan and grant seeking, um, you know, and fine tuning the numbers uh, through a conceptual design uh, is important before going to the residents and, and asking for uh, an appropriation. So this is the first of a series of discussions that we would expect. Um, you know, one thing that came out of this is kind of in a parallel as, as an aside, Kevin and I have talked uh, periodically about, you know, what Deerfield does for connection fees. You've got a major capital plan coming up. You do have room in your infrastructure to take in new customers. My personal opinion is what you charge those customers to connect to your wastewater system is far lower than your assets worth. So I would, or we would urge you to explore that in parallel with this project. And if you have the ability to implement a, a more I say more robust, but a more practical facility connection charge program or system development charge or 
impact fees, whatever the term is that, that you've used, um, I believe what you have right now is pretty modest as compared to what it would cost people to build septic systems. So something that might help you uh, lessen the load on existing users moving forward. Whew. We got through it. Thank you for your, your patience. Thank you. Time for questions. I have uh, a couple uh, questions. Uh, could you, without getting too exact, what are each of the conceptual designs for these plants going to handle for water flow a day? So you would design the, uh, the upgrades to the plant to meet your permitted rated capacity of each plant. Well, so you have, you have flows uh, coming each, in, into each plant that are in lay terms. You have flows coming into each plant that are less than the permitted capacity of each plant. When you upgrade a treatment plant, very rarely do you upgrade a unit process for something less than what it's rated for. Um, right, this isn't an expansion. This is, this is a largely a renewal to current capacity. So I, the South Deerfield plant is permitted for 900,000 gallons a day. So you're, the design that you would go after would be equal to that or larger? So right now, so Kip, quite honestly, when we looked at upgrading old Deerfield versus mothballing old Deerfield and you know, reconnecting it, um, we don't believe that it's in the town's financial best interest right now to try to combine the plants, that that plan is cost prohibitive. Once you make that investment, there's no coming back from it. So you have to build a pump station and a force main to connect the dots. That, you can't phase that cost. I mean, that's gonna be a, probably a 12 to $16 million nut all at once. And that's gonna put a tremendous burden on the ratepayers right now. So we believe the plan is to just upgrade the infrastructure for the rated capacity. So you have a piece of paper with DEP that says that that plant at Old Deerfield, South Deerfield is rated for 0.9 MGD. That's what you'd upgrade it for. So you you have plenty much of keep, capacity in your system to you, accommodate you'd growth. You keep the plants at the capacity that they're currently permitted, not make them any larger. We at all. would. You have tanks right now okay. that aren't being utilized. Okay. And in some cases, you have places for future tanks. I early on in your. Um, uh, presentation you, you spoke about assets of the the both of the plants and uh, you know I, I was informed that we have no headworks project at either of the plants and yet there was uh, a values put on them could you explain to me why well we included both uh, elements of the existing system as well as the parts of the recommended plan that would be constructed so we said, this is what it would cost you to physically construct the entire system. So the, the $28.9 million capital plan is an element of the overall cost of the, 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 the system, so the wastewater assets. So when you talk about the values of the wastewater assets, and you, you have a $1.9 million uh, headworks project, that's after it's completed. Correct. Correct. Well, in your presentation, you said that we have $126 million worth of assets now. If you were going to build it. Oh, that's after it's built. Correct. Okay. It does need to be clarified, Kip. Okay. The, the footnote there is, I don't want to say okay. misleading, but it's confusing, certainly. All right. Well, I, I, I took it as you were saying this is the assets we that we it. have. No, nope, there's no headworks. Oh, yeah. there's, there, there, so this is, the $126 million is not, it's after it's done, that's what it would be an asset to us. So we have a proposed four-phase plan, right? Yep. For two treatment plants and a collection system. If you were to incorporate those and you had nothing on the ground today and you built everything from scratch, it would mm -hmm. cost you $125 million to build everything. Right, I get um, that. We could but say it's 110, we could say it's 150. I guess the point with that slide was to show that you're not throwing away everything you have and building $30 million exactly. in new infrastructure. It's, you know, it's a significant upgrade because quite honestly, we've, we've collectively deferred some of these projects longer than expected, so. It, in your, uh, however you broke down your analysis between uh, the old Deerfield and South Deerfield plant, um, the water flow and, and you say the costs are about 70-30 and that's kind of what I found. But when I went through the income levels and I did it, it was real simple, just by zip codes, um, I found that, that it, it wasn't the 70-30. And uh, I was just curious how you would say that that is pretty it stayed the same. And then also, when you, you put that same 70-30 spread between South Deerfield and Old Deerfield, and all of your figures, the cost in South and Old Deerfield 
is at least 50% of what the South Deerfield one is. So I, I'm confused as to how you hold that 70-30, you know, parallel through this whole A couple process. of things there. I mean, income doesn't really come into play for sewer oh. user fees. I mean, it may be that income is different by zip code, but from a dollar spent per EDU in each of the existing sewer service areas pre-capital, the split was, was very equitable. Um, however, you're picking up on a very good point is there's an initial cost to upgrade a plant and build concrete and put in equipment. In many of these cases, the size of the equipment that you'd put in is a, is a base level or like an initial starting point size. So it's not necessarily linear. You have an, a kind of an initial level of investment whether your plant is 0.03 MGD or 0.1 MGD. Um, I, I don't, I don't dispute that. that. This is why I said that right. the costs were equitable pre-capital. So how we come up with a plan to recover revenue post-project or as the project is implemented is still for discussion, sure. as is your sewer rate structure. But right. So one of the things I think you know, stuck out to me was like the Headworks program in the South Deerfield facility is you, know, you have around one one seven and it's about two million at the other and I think that's because of topography and how that plant it would cost more to put in a headworks program in old Deerfield than it would in South Deerfield. Yeah, so so, so South Deerfield is pretty pretty well positioned from a grade standpoint that you don't Correct. have to dig a big hole right to put and things old, in the ground. Old Deerfield's got old Deerfield, you know, Keith jump in if I'm I'm incorrect, but it's pushing thirty feet deep. So it's thirty, yeah. Getting a screen down to thirty feet deep. I mean the technology is the same but um, I'm sure you guys have put excavators in the ground up here. You get below that top six feet of sand and you're in that marine clay. Trying to dewater and control groundwater and get things in the ground is pretty... And the water table up there is terrible. Oh, absolutely, yeah. That's right. Yeah, right we've up. lost plenty of sheeting in Hatfield over the years trying to put things in the ground. So I'm, I'm sure it's similar. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, just, I just wanted to clearly understand uh, that difference between South Deerfield and Old Deerfield uh, to make sure that when we consider the rates that it is fair and equitable and that I see, um, you know, the money, the revenues that's coming in from our users is not that 70-30 split. And it, that it probably cost, won't be after construction. Right. Well, and after yeah. and afterwards, right. it's it, the cost of it, like I said, is at yep. least 50 percent, you know, and it could be more. So where we're at right now is we need to start getting input on the four phase plan and the timeline. And once we do, then I think we can kind of shift gears towards the revenue collection options. And then that's a whole nother set of yeah. discussions, right? I mean, we've broached this a little bit in years past um, on rates and structures and opinions and everything else, but everything you said is accurate from a now versus then moving yeah. forward later. It could, it could tip it a little bit. Okay. Um, I just had a couple questions on your um, uh, uh, criteria. You had um, listed safety as only five um, percent or five points versus another rating. I just wanted to make sure if you had weighted safety any he um, more, we you would not have shifted any of the priorities. I, yeah. I just want to make sure. It's a great observation, and it and it shouldn't be downplayed. And I really don't think it was as a group. What we found when we got into the nitty gritty is that there was really one element, disinfection, at the two plants right now where you have chlorine gas that is the primary safety concern for the operators. Beyond that, I mean, sure, there's safety concerns, but um, as a licensed operator and with the track record that Keith has, safety didn't end up being a glaring concern throughout the plant. Okay. And what we found was some of those other criteria, Carolyn, they started to, they started to pull that right up anyways. Mm -hmm. So when we weighted them, um, it didn't, you know, we, we played around with things to see how it would shake out, but disinfection for sure. Yeah. And Kevin has an ongoing, you know, issues as I'm sure you're aware of, you know, with that and, uh, state concerns, but, mm -hmm. but, you know, as comfortable as Keith is with chlorine gas and as well, good of a job as they do, we do view that as one of the, the obvious needs, um, for the next generation, et cetera, in terms of making things safer more environmental friendly, okay. et cetera. I, so going, it's on the I just UV. wanted to absolutely no, sure like UV. safety We did not downplay address. safety. We promised. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was no. just like, I looked at that and I was like, can trust mm -hmm. you on that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> not with these guys. All right. Um, 
And then I was wondering, you know, when we talked about the phases and stuff, like the aeration basins and stuff like that, is any of this stuff um, we could do under our um, municipal vulnerability program money where it could be uh, attributed to upgrading through climate for tr climate change? Because that's a good, I mean, we have to come up with 40% match, but 40% versus and having a 60% um, match would be wonderful. I hope so. I honestly don't know the answer. Yeah. Um, I would have to get smarter on that particular program relative to okay, cause wastewater. I would, I would hope that we could do that because um, if we could, um, I mean, money is coming available next month again. Um, we're one of the first communities to be certified, and so the governor is literally throwing money at this program because he wants us to participate and our communities to participate. And so we're you know, we have put a lot of effort in to make sure that we're in the forefront of that, and we want to, pretty soon, the money will be, it's a good program, so pretty soon there'll be a lot of, you know, communities participating. But at the moment, yeah. um, maybe this would be one of the things we could do and bump up on the schedule, but if we're going to get it funded to 60%, it would be wonderful. I think the short answer is yes. Every time we hear about a grant or an opportunity, right? Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. even like the mass works, sometimes it's a stretch to try to fit wastewater, you know, into the mass works. Well, that's what I was just going to say. Un uh, can we, I understand, uh, we certainly want to get in the queue for USDA. Right. But at the same time, can we start the mass works process and just keep because sometimes you just have to be in line for a couple years right. and then it's you when get it's it. your turn right yeah and part of it so what I'd like you to do is think about who we'd have to speak to to mm -hmm. advocate I mean a lot of times you just need um, letters from surrounding communities and you know we we certainly could get climate change you know our, our um, plants are on the Deerfield River and the Connecticut River, so we've certainly done a massive amount of work and documentation. We can show that they're right. susceptible to climate change and all the frequent events, so we can we can come up with our story. Absolutely. So, but I need to know who to speak to and what line to get in, in front of on this, and then we could, you know, I, I certainly feel like we could do better yeah, than the I, USDA. I mean, that's a good thing to, it's conservative, I know we can get it, right? Um, but let's well, try some of these other angles. I think that there are a lot of little ancillary, pro I don't say little, ancillary programs that really start to make an impact. So last year there was a Mass DEP energy grant option. I mean, we, we in Deerfield, we kind of weren't ready yet, right? I mean, right. we just kind of, we needed six months and then we would have been there. But that program provided $200,000 grants um, to communities, a maximum of 200. And let's say we have a little half million dollar project or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could have a return on investment from an energy standpoint that could pay you back in three years. Right. So I think now we're kind of positioned to jump right. on some of those things. The, the crux of the USDA, and USDA may say we don't have 30 million all at once, but if we can kind of do the, the spine of the project with something that we know we have a long-term source for and then supplement it. And we could be very creative, but this is just kind of the starting point. Oh, right. no, no, no. Right. I um, just wanted to make sure that you knew we were willing to be ready to go, get in the right line, Yep. call people. I hear that from Wendy often. Is this a good fit? Build our story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's right. you know, see how we can take these other programs, like you said, the energy grant one or whatever, and, and combine them so that you're starting to pick off this stuff as we go. Right, absolutely. Um, I mean, it was clear when we put some of the previous charts up that some of the needs that we've been talking about for two, three years haven't changed. I mean, right. headworks, getting right. the, the rags I mean, I, and the, the things out. There's nothing we can do. Yeah. We have to do the headworks. Right. I'm the facilitator, but I'd like to comment in response to your question. Given that, and if you, you all read the paper, and, oh, right? Mm -hmm. um, you'll see <laughs> <laughs> local news. Um, you will see we are with many, many, many communities, not only across the state, but probably across the country, who are encountering these issues with treatment plants. Mm -hmm. And I would hope and guess maybe on the federal and state level there'll be more opportunities, just like there was this energy program last year, 
there'll be others. So I think we just have to look for those things and also ask for those things. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was hoping that you could help us position ourselves to take advantage of all these little side Wait, things that could. That's what you do. Yes, I know. I hustle money. I think if we put a little pay. table together with programs, timelines, so we're yes. kind of geared up and ready. Right. And, you know, once we do, the USDA application is a nightmare. It's, it's, yeah. it's, I know. it's a, I know. It's but, a big, but, but a lot of the stuff that goes into that, we can pirate for other applications very easily. Absolutely. So, and that's what right. we'll do, you know. Right. And that's why, I, you know, doing the mass works on, you know, parallel to the USDA processes. 100% on board. Uh, okay. 100%. I just wanted to make sure. Everything, anything and everything. Okay. Like I said, the first answer from all of us is yes. Yeah. And then we figure out how to make the spin to, to connect it to, to what we want to do. Well, I mean, sometimes the answer couple, will be no. It took but. us three years to get the Mass Works project for River Road, but Understood. I went to 50 million meetings, and guess what? They ultimately voted for it, and that's what we have to do. We have the squeaky to go. wheel. I know we have to be the squeaky wheel, but yeah. um, having a plan makes us. You know, now I will be nominated as South County. Um, the, the representative <laughs> to the the transportation committee that makes the mass works decisions. Oh, good. So, I mean, but it's I'm not going to do it unless that we're going to be in a position. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how we got the river road. You just right. show up, you show up, and you show up, and guess right. what? You sort of get them. Yeah. And there's others too. Last summer there was the Withia <clears throat> program, which was a federal one. That one wasn't super attractive from a debt service standpoint, but the cool thing there was is you could go 30 years on your debt and you could close the loan up to five years after the construction project. So let's say we had a project that opened up a significant development that was publicly accepted, that was gonna add a couple hundred EDUs. That would be the type of project that it would be attractive for because hey, we get a couple hundred EDUs on the system and for five years you can start banking their sewer user fees and now all of a sudden you have that window to start you know, bridging the, the, the payback or the debt service, so. Uh, does the board have more questions or uh, others? Can I open up? Study yeah. committee, okay. I, I'd just like to make a comment uh, on both what Henry said and what you said, is I just want to emphasize for the public out there so it's not a misinterpretation, that your 7030 that you're talking about is only for the operation maintenance cost Correct. and not any revenue, and I think that's where Henry is yeah. talking a lopsided revenue uh, thing. So you're actually talking two different things. I agree with you from what Keith and uh, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin uh, had said, given this <laughs> committee worse, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, last year, you know, with the breakdown, which was very good, and, and it does come out to 7030. And, and they did keep the O&M separate from the other costs. It's the other costs that I think that are becoming lopsided, not the O&M. So. You mean capital? Capital. No. Yeah, the, 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 the capital cost. costs are the ones that become past the 7030. Gotcha. It's the O&M, the that seems to be operation, and operating and maintenance, yep. the per unit cost is, you know, by their charge is coming out pretty close to 7030. So I just wanted that clarified. Uh, I, the other thing is. I think we, just to stop there and pause there, we, we may disagree. I, I, we believe right now that the split is equitable for the entire wastewater budget, not just O&M. You don't have a lot of debt in there yet. Yeah, I mean, right. So I, I think it's fair to say that your overall fiscal 18 budget, that's what we looked at, mm -hmm. that's what Keith and Kevin split line by line, was equitable. When, when you start doing major capital, it's going to shift the equation. There's no yeah. doubt. There's no right. doubt. Two treatment right. plants, similar cost for each treatment plant, significantly different EDUs for each right. district. I don't even want to say district, each yeah. area. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so we have to account for that. Sorry to interrupt you. And, no, no, no. and the other thing is I just do want to reiterate your uh, uh, cost inflation because some of these items are, you know, from two years ago, which you would present, I think it was you, I'm not sure whether you were Weston Sampton. Weston but Sampton. if you look at the general figures in that, they're actually in two years, they've escalated between 8 and 10%. Mm -hmm. So, so the longer we wait, know, the so more we money keep, it's going to be. Keep kicking the can down the road. This is what we're looking at every, you know, as We're you using 4% right now for construction inflation. I mean... There's that, years when it's two, side. there's years that it's seven. I mean, oh, yeah. Kip, yeah. you do construction. I mean, there's just certain things we just can't control. Fuel is the big one. Anything that relates to that. It's yep. like it parallels milk and bread and everything else. Yep. So. Now, does these, uh, uh, you know, preliminary costs, those uh, including engineering costs and These include costs soft costs. Uh, so there's, there's pretty significant contingencies built in. I will say 
at this kind of orbit satellite level. You know, we're doing our best to try to put numbers on things based on what we've seen from bids on other treatment oh, plant understood. projects. Yep. Yep. But it, but it, they're pretty, they're pretty conservative. Our goal would be as things evolve, that in individual projects that we kind of trim, we trim the the fat, if you will. But right now, I don't want to. We don't want to give you a number and then in the spring come back and be like, oh shoot, we were low by twenty percent. That's just uh, bad I'm business. I'm just asking. Yes, sure sir. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Anybody else have a question, comment, Jack? Uh, I just want to confirm. I know the Southfield plant was built and designed for one million gallons per day, and then it was reduced by DEP to 850,000 gallons because of oxygen pickle. So, are you planning on maintaining that one million or the 850,000? I think you said 900, right? My recollection was a 900 number. I mean, this is one instance where I would very much like to have Tony here if he wasn't sneezing and coughing all over all of us. Yeah. Um, Old Airfield was scheduled for a quarter of a million, 250,000. Yeah. Second question I got is on USDA funding. Could you amplify on that a little bit better? How long does the process take? And when should we start applying for stuff like that? Because I think we've got to take every advantage we can mm -hmm. to try and get right now. savings and yeah. right now. Right now. So that that proposed, I mean, this is jumping a little bit around, but the proposed, you know, rate or the, you know, advice relative to the consideration for your 19 rate takes into account trying to get in that queue. So USDA has a rolling program, kind of first come, first serve. They've got a weird financial clock. Their, their, their calendar starts uh, December 1st. So we're like there in terms of when they get money. With that said, they just got the announcement on last year's allocation like two months ago. You may have seen things in the newspaper online, 15 billion in water, wastewater infrastructure. So we've been sitting for two and a half years. USDA was dry, um, literally no money. And we talked about that as an option, but I couldn't tell you it was a practical option. Now they're flush with cash. So um, we feel like depending on how this conversation goes and depending on how you're rate hearing conversation goes that we would immediately act on your behalf to submit a USDA application, mm -hmm. uh, at least for phase one, to yes. get the ball rolling. And as Carolyn suggested, then it's everything else, mass works, energy grants, um, you know, all the things that we can kind of piggyback on because it's not always going to be a yes, right? USDA may come back and say, we only have six million this year. Um, and there's some strategy because if you decide this is a go, and we go to Mass DEP, and Mass DEP, you know, helps the matter by putting a piece of paper in front of USDA. In theory, we can go from 45% grant to 75% grant, but that's um, that's a point of no return uh, <laughs> option because you said I am going to go, and then if you don't get the money, you're boxed in. So yeah. um, we didn't present that 75% as a real option, uh, but we have been able to help some communities get that. So. Can, can people not talk? Thank you. You got a memo and a Mac. What's our actual? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I can see this the range there. You got a minimum, you got a maximum. So there's a question, there, where are we in between the one and five? Yeah. I mean you can imagine we have probably close to a thousand rows of assets between the two treatment plants. Yeah. And um, probably at least that on the collection system. Um, so what we did was we used that as a preliminary sorting tool to try to identify those elements that were most important. And if you flip to, James, if you flip to the side that has like South Deerfield, the four phases. They were on page number seven, right? Page right. number nine. Thank you, Wendy. So when we looked at the scoring, this is where the group had to play around a little bit with the numbering because you can imagine that if there were ten line items for Headworks, and eight of them were like solid gold, you know, 40s, 50, you know, pushing 50. And then there were a couple other elements that snuck in there because they might have been related to like chlorine gas or something else. We had to kind of play around with those. But the glaring ones that came out at the top of the list, no matter how we cut it, and we cut it a few different ways, headworks, secondary clarifiers, UV disinfection, and then some minor kind of electrical things to facilitate that. So 
we have a, a booklet that we can distribute by PDF. I didn't want to bring copies. There's literally, it's 11 by 17, and there's probably, Trevor, 40 pages. You have it right this there. This is just one. It's, and that's, that's just one of the three. But you're certainly welcome to go through it. The art form element came in to, we have that and we have money needs. How do we try to put them in columns, one through four? <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> um, I just have another question on, um, so timeline. Say we do the December 1st um, submittal date to USDA. Okay, so can, I, can we back date from then? When, when do you need or how much time do you need to put that application together for us? Um, probably so, four to six weeks. So it's three parts. It's, a, it's an engineering report, piece of cake based on what we've done. It's yeah. an environmental report, a little bit more work there to integrate all the GIS layers and everything else. And then it's what I would call the underwriting piece, which is, you know, Wendy's got to go pull stuff from every department, help me out. Kevin's got to shake things loose at Town Hall, too. Um, I think four to six weeks is doable. So we need to make a decision tomorrow. On a rate. On a, on a rate. Yeah, and, the, the and, December 1st and, thing is, you know, I, I like how you're thinking and working backwards. Well, USDA I want to submit, I want to be the first in line for that money. The problem is you um, have to understand everybody, everybody's plants are about the same age because this, everybody built the plants, as you know, under the Clean Air, Clean Water Act. So everybody has 1970s kind of infrastructure. So everybody's in the same boat. Well, so from an we infrastructure you, standpoint, but I, this may not feel like it all the time with the personalities and voices. You're, more, you're better organized than most of our clients. They're in this position. So well, for those that are listening out there, sorry. But um, <laughs> no, you, you really are. The fact that you've started to try to align selectmen, finance, wastewater towards capital, we're just not quite there with a lot of our clients. There's a lot of operators and DPW directors that know that we have a problem. Um, but in some communities, we haven't yet started to serve as a common voice. And that you can't do anything until you get to that point. But mm -hmm. your question about the timeline, assuming you do that, they would come back and they would give you a soft yes. By soft yes, I mean they won't ink the letter with the committee. Right. But I need us to be in line first. Understood. And then we can go look for other. Your, your position to do that if you choose yeah. to do it. Okay. So what I'm saying is since you need six to eight weeks, that December 1st deadline is coming. So if we make a decision in this next week um, or this week, can you deliver for December 1st for us? Yeah, we'll get it done. I mean, assuming that there's nothing, and we've done funding applications together over the past couple of years. Tony's also done them with the town. I don't see any reason why uh, we wouldn't be able to do that. I'm, I'm trying to think if there's any administrative things that okay. require other board inputs. So I, don't, I don't think so. What I, what I wanna know is um, the phase one, Say we, say we put in for the $9,290. Um, if, if we ask for that much and we are able to find supplemental funding somewhere else, at, at what, oh, so we get in the queue. Okay, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. We get in the queue for the $9 million or $10 million, whatever. Okay, then um, when, what's their, when does their timeline come back? If the, obviously they have money now for a very short period of time, and it sounds like a lot of money, but it isn't. Fifteen so, billion nationally is not. No, it's, it's not, not very lot. much. Yeah. Because everybody and his brother across all the United States are doing that. Okay. Right. So if we're in there, what's the, what do you think their timeline is going to be? Because there's. I think by February, March, assuming we've continued to carry the torch through the capital planning budget mm -hmm. sequence, okay. right in parallel. Yeah and we get a soft yes from USDA. The soft yes from USDA may be, we have nine million, but it's gonna be over two years. So they like to do four to five million dollars per community per year. So they may just say that, but it's to, to us it's a two year construction project. Right. So it's okay, right, from right. a money standpoint. Exactly. Well, Once I don't they, think we're gonna be able to find, honestly, from my opinion, it's not gonna be able to do much with headworks and clarifiers. I mean, there doesn't, there isn't very many opportunities anywhere to BS a story about those things, right? Aside from USDA, no, you're right. It's tough okay. to make that connection. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but everything else could be we could come up with maybe a story, right? Agreed. Okay, so if we do this, we get in line, then we ha we're in line for town meeting, we're in mm -hmm. line for um, 
you know, our, our rates should be able to subsidize what, that amount of money, right? This plan assumes that the debt for phase one is going to hit you in 21-22. Okay. That the soft costs are going to hit you in the balance of 19 and 20. So you, you're kind of already there when you think about it, right? So if you're able to take the advice at the rate hearing, you've already gotten yourself to the point where you've raised your rates to accommodate some of the soft costs. By making the adjustment for 19, you're pretty much already there for 20, okay. right? Now you're, you're looking at your next jump in 21, 22, All right. uh, depending and on so, how the debt hits. But. And, and also, you, did you take into consideration that we have 70 new hookups and customers potentially? I knew yes. of this project but peripherally. No, we didn't. Okay. I mean, you, you, so you hit the nail on the head. Change the denominator, change the game. Okay. Um, so what I'd like to do is, is convince my other two commissioners that we need to get in line quick and, and start this process. And then we start looking for other sources of money for the other additional things and, mm -hmm. and, our, and work on our stories. So. Can you commit to us that you can do that for us, um, time-wise, your time? Yeah, the, t the time element isn't going to be okay. a concern at all. If, okay. you, if you get a hard no on the rate adjustment for 19, then the conversation shifts to, are we trying to do some stuff in good faith to keep the ball moving mm -hmm. while you're waiting to get the money lined up? But I think, I, I hope that we've shown an ability to Okay. You know, you get in line and also expedite when we need to you expedite. Have been yes. And what yes. would it we're cost, trying. We're not perfect. What it would cost your cost be for preparing the application? Uh, we usually say a placeholder of fifteen grand for USDA right. application. I, yeah. I think we can skinny that down a little bit based on you know help from from Wendy and Kevin on that third pile, which was the underwriting pile. Mm -hmm. I mean, I quite honestly, that's not James's favorite part of the okay. application <laughs> anyway. One, so. one, <laughs> one of the things I just want to say is that I don't think there's going to be more money coming down the line right away. So if we don't take advantage of this new pot of money at USDA, we're not going to get it. So, and, and at the moment, this is the only source of some subsidy. I mean... I, I agree with that. Right. Okay. You know, what, so, what we want to do, Carolyn, is... This is very important that we move fast. You want to put this. a buffalo on the table at town meeting, because if we can ask for a huge amount of money in the residents' eyes, but we've put a grant on the table... Right. In my eyes, it's a much more achievable Absolutely. yes right. than if it's and, and all on you. rates on, you know, all but on you. I'm almost positive that this money will go very, very fast. So if we don't get there. Mm -hmm. Understood. The they do like to, let's say the money dries up from that pot. If we're in the pipeline, USDA likes to do multiple phases with a, with a client or a customer or a community that's taken the initiative. And if you... Are able, if, we, if we partner with them on phase one, I feel like we through. may have, maybe we have a bump in the road where it gets dry for two years, right. you know, to political reasons that we can't control. But it's okay for us because we're exactly. not ready for the exactly. next phase anyway. I mean, but um, I absolutely agree with that because I've worked with them before. It's just that I don't think the money, I mean, I think the money will come in a couple of years because somebody has to do an infrastructure project for right. money across the country. But nobody's doing it at the moment, and so I, I there's just, a yeah I know yeah USDA. the ripple's going to come I, back against the, yeah. the needs yeah. So um, do you okay. want to take some Do other questions, some? please? Yes, I'm, Thank all, you. I'm done with. I already made. She's got a question here, points. Carolyn. What are you proposing for the? You're proposing to raise the rate from ten dollars per thousand to eleven point seven five. Yes. This is effective July one, or is it going to be affecting the bill that we're going to get for November? and the bill we're going to get in May. November and May. November, November and May. So we've already used the sewer, and now you're going to raise the rate on everybody. They've mm -hmm. done that historically. That's how it always works. I know, yep. that's, that's right. what I'm right. trying to say. I don't know that it's necessarily Bob, fair. Bob, this isn't right. anything well, that's changed. <laughs> okay, now my next question is, the minimum right now is $100? Per right? billing cycle. Yeah, per, per billing, billing cycle. Okay, that's not being changed. You're raising the rate. Right. of the users of the water or the what have you by okay. gallons by roughly 10 percent almost 20 percent but you're not raising that minimum and you know to be fair with the people that have high usage like myself you know you should probably be raising the minimum also yes okay but all right and 
The next was Bob. Bob, I'm, to offset that. Well, why don't we let him finish? Okay. The other question is, how much money do we have right now in the reserve account as of July one? Nine hundred eighty-seven thousand. And what do we bring in every six months? About half that. Yeah. So we've got two years worth of money already there Probably from rates. Five to six hundred thousand per year. Yeah. You know, you're strangling people that are trying to pay the bill. Yeah. Bob, uh, part of that problem with that is that because our it, it, it's an expensive thing, but because the rates are so low, a lot of times when people. You know, are looking at our grant applications. There's the same. Oh, I know. I read that. I read the you know, information. So that's part. That's part of the issue too. But what I'm trying to drive at is, is, you know, if you're going to raise the rate on the people that are high usage on the on the gallons, the minimum rate should also go up. Yes, okay. but Bob, there are people that are not flushing the toilets because they want to save on their rates. No, there, okay? are, there are going to be more and people that, that are going to be saving the water in the bathtub and pumping it out, using it for the toilet. Can I ask okay. um, the consultant for to res do you have any comment on the minimum rate? I think that I'm, I'm not sure that it makes a substantial difference for this proposed year, but in future years, I think that the, the fixed percentage of the, the fee needs to increase as the debt service goes up. So, you know, in all likelihood, regardless of how much water we're using 10 years out, a higher percentage of our total budget is fixed based on the debt. But we didn't, honestly, Bob, we didn't run that scenario. We kept it at 200. A lot of what we heard in the last meetings and discussions was seniors concerned about on the low end. And we, we tried to preserve that to the extent possible. There's no right answer, though. I I don't disagree with you from a financial standpoint. I'm just trying to point it out. It would obviously, the higher the, the higher the base rate is, the lower the, yeah. the unit rate comes down. Um, I think it would still, if we raise that base rate, we would probably negatively impact seniors mm -hmm. or low water users more than we are now. But That's you the, might be able to reduce the rate from the 1175 to 1150. Yes, but Bob, part of, no. part of it, Bob, is we're still below the state average. And the problem is why it was such a waste to go. I mean, I spent hours looking for grants years ago. And, and they, when they asked us what our rates were, it was one of the lowest read, in the state. Okay. And people just refused to even talk to us. All right, I read um, the information. Right. Kevin? My, my other no, suggestion. No, no. You have one more on. thing? Well, my other suggestion okay. is we contact our congressman and see if they can facilitate an earmark. We have yeah. that as the list of possibilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Bob, yeah. I just Kevin and things. So, so I think probably, and I'm, I'm talking to the group as a whole here, is we're we're really focusing on the financial, and which which is key because I mean you can't do it if you can't pay for it. Mm -hmm. But so am I to assume at this point in time that everything we say here we're going to go ahead and move forward with, and now we're just talking about the financial. Because realistically, if you're going to be moving anything around, the financial is going to change again. So let's focus on, is this what we're going to do? Is this the direction we're going to head in? And if we are, then how do we go ahead and find our financing for it? You know what I mean? That's kind of the direction I'm looking at. Again, financial is extremely important. But... Are we, are we as a town or a district or however you want to call us going to go ahead with phase one? And, and the thing that, and, and I know this is Keith's concern also, is we should say this is the four phases that we are going to fund. And the reason why I say that is because I hate to see Halfway into phase two, beginning of phase three, God, do we really need to do that? Mm -hmm. You know, and and unfortunately, we have an awful bad habit of doing that here in this well, town. Can I reply to that? I think I think the way it's set up that it, you don't, you don't really have to do all four because it's right. it's just all spread out. You know, to make it affordable and construction wise, calendar it. It really is a one whole project, and, and you're right. It may it may take. Um, you might get halfway through and. Because of political and funding, you've got to wait a couple years or a year and a half or something. But the goal is just to keep, you know, accept it as a whole, 
and, and move forward this yes. in, in, a, in a whole project in four phases. And those phases may have to stretch and come in and depending on the engineering and what the, you know, the hard, the hard analysis Trevor, is. Trevor, Jack, Jack was Oh, gonna, sorry. Uh, I, I just want to comment uh, back up on Trevor's thing and, and you're, just to answer you. Um, we want to make sure that we want to make sure that we do the four phases, but obviously we cannot guarantee that there isn't like a, a, the economy crashes like in 2008. Oh, of course. I mean that that's just plain common We're sense. Committing. What I'm getting at is what I'm concerned about is all of a sudden somebody go UV. Do you do you really need the UV there? You know, maybe we'll go back to the maybe we'll go back to the chemical because we can because we can save two dollars and seventy five cents per household over the next ten years. That, well, that, we is, had enough that is my, okay. that is my Kevin, concern. Kevin, we've had enough analysis of this. That's right. why we hired Dave exactly. and his group to make sure that it was organized. Sure. We have data. No. Understood. We have a plan. Okay. But the point Jack I was getting Davey? at is I was. Well, I did, I did and then Skip. I, I think that, to your point, I think phase one is exactly what we've been talking about for years. Mm -hmm. and these, are, these are all projects that have to be. Right. Agreed. Right. There's no so as far as phase one goes, I, I would to say give this is exactly what That's I've exactly been, right. I've been looking mm -hmm. for since I got involved. It would be mm -hmm. a huge step in the right direction. And then, right. you know, the other things I think that yeah, there I don't know, there might be changes. There might be changes in technology or in there might be a downturn in the economy, there you know, who knows? But but at least phase one is you know Let's get going. But my, my other comment, which I, I, was, I was going to comment on what Bob was, Bob was talking about the affordability for uh, Deerfield residents. And some time ago, I made a suggestion that we develop a system to allow them to pay their bills by the month, like, if you, like any other utility bill or phone bill. Mm -hmm. I remember that. And, you know, because, you know, people get a bill every, every six months for, I don't know, $600. That's a lot of money to come up with in one, whereas you can pay $65 a month, you can budget that much more mm -hmm. easily. And, you know, Dave, do you have any comment on that? Or I think that? As, as you unroll your capital program, adding some administrative costs to facilitate monthly billing, or maybe you decide to externalize all the billing altogether, it, it kind of isn't a significant cost as it might have been three years ago. Where you know maybe it cost would have cost us twenty or thirty grand to add that service. Now twenty or thirty grand as you move forward in a twelve-year program, maybe that's just what you need to do. Or maybe mm -hmm. to start, you just give people the option, kind of like a budget with you know oil or electricity of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. trying to normalize the the bill over a period of year. And maybe there's a modest service fee with it to do it. But um, you know I, I I don't I don't think it's a bad idea at all. I mean. Okay. Credit card transfer to do. We should yep. we should be able to do that. And I, I really think that would make things it's a good, much good point. easier yeah. for. Yep. Okay. For, for, for it, would, it would take the sting out. Right. Yeah. It would definitely take out the sting. Skip had a comment. Uh, question. What's the? Can you give me an idea of what the timeline is? When we, if we started phase one. You missed it. You. It was. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I did. <laughs> How long does this thing take to complete? The various phases, I guess. That's really the... 13 years. So 13 it's, years. it's three years three per years. phase. So fiscal 19 is kind of the get the ball rolling, try to get an appropriation in place. So that'd be an extra half year for phase one. But fiscal 20, 21, 22. So 21 and 22 is when the money really starts to hit, mm -hmm. hit the budget. And then each subsequent phase, this is a starting point, mm -hmm. is about three years long if... Carolyn is able to go out there and secure, you know, an opportunity. You may decide to pull something forward or push something back. You know, there's flexibility, but. So this is approximately a 12 year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. As it stands right now. Okay. I mean, game changers happen. If they happen, we deal with it. But. And is there any particular reason why you do phase one and then not immediately follow it up with phase three since it's all one plan? Okay, I can answer that question. Yeah, um, needs they're both approximately the same agent and approximately the same mm -hmm. material condition. So, oh yeah, sorry. So, um, 
not to neglect any one plant for any longer than necessary. It would be staged so that the critical stuff for South Deerfield would happen first, being the larger of the two, and then we would start tending to Old Deerfield as well. And it's really great the way he also laid it out where the collection system will get a steady income stream to address that issue. And right now, with all the rain we've had, our INI is 50 to 75% of our flow right now. Wow. And it's been that way for quite a while. Which this has been the flow? wettest summer since I've worked for the town. Yep. Yep. And our flows, we have peaked over nearly one and a half million uh, approximately 13 times in the last month. Wow. So it's in not a 900. In a day. In a day. That's per day. Wow. One and a half which, million which gallons. Is so half that's of what we're supposed to. We're not, we're not going to get fined. Jeff has a question. And no, but it's. <laughs> yeah, some of this has been covered earlier in the meeting. Well, if depending on finance, is is there any way of, of compressing some of this time or expanding the time depending on what the financial situation is, or is it pretty? We can't do. Oh, I see. Phase what you're one in, in less than three years. Well, no, it depends on the money. Well, Skip. that was my point. Yeah. I mean, if we get the USDA grant is conservative. It gives us 40% grant and, and it's cheap, relatively cheap. So if we get that money, that's a conservative start. We started on South Deerfield, which is the most critical. Mm -hmm. And we have stuff that we, years of discussion that we have to do. We know that that's what we have to do. Okay. Everything else after that, I look at flexible, depending on how much we can money we can hustle and, and how fast that money comes in. There could be a program that is available in two years because everybody's plants are about the same and everybody has always, you know, nobody puts as much money in the infrastructure as they should. So guess what? There could be all of a sudden a huge amount of money available, then we could smoosh everything together and, and take advantage of that. So the hope okay. is that on the Call, let's call it 15 million for round figures, it's mm -hmm. close to 16, 15. That 40% of that would be in the form of grant, 60% would be in a 40 year long yep. at 2%. Those mm -hmm. are the numbers that we okay. Yep. And that, that's, our, that's our baseline. And we're hoping to hustle some whatever else. In that thir next 13 years, we're hoping somehow to get additional money, additional help, and and depending on that and the economy, I mean, you always have risk. So you okay. got you got to do that timeline. I know. You may have heard that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it's important to say we got to start. That's the point I think you've made. And okay. It's being made, and Kevin made also. Um, Jeff. Just speaking on finances here, I think this is a great opportunity to take and educate the public a little bit. Uh, some of us in this room know what we're talking about and there's a lot of people in town that probably aren't aware of it and that comes to the 7525 and where we're at with that the process to get there to make that happen so people in town will understand uh, as far as the financing of this and how it's going to impact everybody and I think this would be a great opportunity right now to bring that forward you mean you mean to discuss that how this yeah, how this is going to get yeah, funded? So, people so, know the, the so whole process of where we're at, how the seventy five is going to happen, how the twenty five is going to happen, as far as percentage, right? Who's going to pay what? And I, I think it's just a great opportunity to educate people that are paying attention and, and know, the public that are right. that are here and on on TV. Yes, and, um, and some people may be aware. But yeah, I think, I think many that aren't. many aren't aware that I think. Well, I'll just go back from what I've been educated from from Jack and others sure. that um, back in 1923 when we put in an infrastructure sewer. I think it was 1935. 35. Okay. Oh, it's old enough for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so when when they put uh, when that you know before we didn't have a sewer system. So so they um, they got some money. Uh, to, you know, they raised money and, and had, had a town meeting vote that, that uh, to pay for all these pipes to go in and to start this infrastructure, that 75% of the cost would be um, borne by the users um, that, that were having this sewer attached to their homes, and 25% and, uh, would be um, on the general, out of the general fund, general tax fund. So 
you know, nowadays people have septics and they're on sewer. So we have these two kind of classes of two groups of people in town. Um, and so some people may feel like, look, I'm, you know, nobody's coming here to pay my, my uh, replace my septic system. Um, and then, you know, a so sewer user is, is it, you know, it should all be born on the sewer users. But people have to kind of understand or we all have to have a general conversation about this is the law that's been on the book since apparently 1935. Um, and and there, there's other benefits that people get from having most of your town or a large part of your downtown on a sewer system and not, you know, we're, we're too wet for septics everywhere. Everyone can't have a septic system in every house when they're right next to each other. Um, and, and we, you know, we pay for all kinds of things that we don't specifically benefit from, you know, tan tangibly. Um, a lot of seniors pay to educate all of our children. They, you know, they may have had children come through or they may have had not had any children, um, but they still pay. You know, a big 70% of our tax money goes to educate children. There's many other things. Our, our police department, our roads, our plowing. There's all kinds of areas. The principal reason for the plan, for these plants, is to protect us from infectious disease. Correct. From diseases like cholera, dysentery, which have become, you know, most people don't even Never know even heard of them. Septus. Yes. Thousands yes. Of it's so also benefits. it's also to have a clean, clean rivers. And also clean to, rivers. And also to protect the uh, the river. Yes. Can we, can we be okay. To take so one from the back. Jack back Paul question, and then come back to you. Oh. Okay. The school. The schools use this. And the yes, they do. Buildings use this. Yes. Which they don't pay, right? No, we do. No, they now. do. We do. They do now. now. Starting this year. Yes. Yes. Yep. We Actually, right. starting last the year. The town pays. Town. Okay. This building. Well, the school. Frontier. Yep. Yep. Okay. Because it seems like that would be thir almost thirty percent there with the. Uh, <laughs> the but, the yeah. school doesn't use that much. All those kids. Yep. Yeah. Frontier Regional uses. Frontier does. Amount, but that share amongst the four towns. And that's because of the showers. Now my toilets. Jeff. <laughs> so. <laughs> We're, right now, we have a process in place. How are we going to make the transition from the process that we have in place to the process of what you're discussing here, mm -hmm. where a sewer user is going to pay 75% and then 25% is going to be paid by the town? A follow-up to that will be, are we going to run into any legal issues because of it's being an enterprise fund and uh, charging non-users? So those would be the two questions I have to pose here. I just want to make sure that legally we're heading in the right direction and we don't get ourselves in a bind here. I think um, we've talked about this. Do you want to say something? Yeah, I, you should seek input from legal counsel for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we were just listening to Some yeah, communities, uh, Hatfield is one uh, right. that typically puts its capital on the general fund and uh, not on user fees. 100%. 100% of their capital is on the... Is, is on the general fund. Yeah. That's that's that a, was voted by that's a community town. choice. That's a community yeah. choice. I don't believe that there's anything legally that precludes you from having a split, but I would advise you to, yeah. to ask counsel. And those are good questions. I think all that you're right. You know, we, we have this plan now. Now we have to kind of get it right. Get it as into a, in a serious process and know what what the rates are going to be. Both those tomorrow. We night. have to so get organized. Three months down the road here, and then all of a sudden, hey, have guess somebody what? come out and challenge us. And Absolutely. Say, hey, wait a second. Right. You know, the enterprise fund and user yep. fee, and yep. all of a sudden we find ourselves in the bind. I, you know, I that's know there's short some limitations. Right. right. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Understood. I, don't want to run into I do that. know there were there were some limitations on the enterprise funds and how we kind of did that for the next because we just set it up that there's a grace period of yeah. years. I know there, three years, there's three years uh, right art on it, so. so we'll get all those answers um, so and have the, them for the public so the, uh, the the money that will come from general funds will be a separate line item in the budget will be part of the capital the, but the, they we the ahead. capital will um, list phase one and and the amount and then the funding will be will be listed as seventy five twenty five. Where he's asking more particularly. Well, what I guess what For I'm saying CICC, is you're talking it's about going through. What if, what if it didn't pass? So that twenty five percent from the general funds. Well, 
then we obviously, if it doesn't pass, then we don't get the grant, does it, do we? So there's, yeah, there's a lot, I think, that we're still up, it's up to our, well, it's up to our residents. But have to bring it up. Well, Does this have to go through town vote? Yes. As far yeah. as the 7525. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. it yeah. would. Yes, it would. But, but, yep. but we you would have our town meeting percent. in April, and if they yeah. gave us a soft yes in March, we'd have some information to go right. to town meeting to to and town say, meeting. look, at least we're getting 40%, you know, grant and a 2% okay. over 40 years. This, at the moment, this is, we have to do this. This seems like a relatively good deal. Right. And, you know, the rest of the discussion, you know, maybe we can mitigate it by going out and hustling money. But you gotta have your story. We gotta work with the MVP program. In other words, people have to come and come to a listening session so we can amend our MVP, um, you know, plan. And, you know, there's certain things we have well, to jump through. But if we do that, yeah. is this right. going to have a major impact on the capital plan? Right. Yes, right. Oh, yeah. we'll sort that and the big, will. the big. So we're going to have to figure. You that have out. to list mm -hmm. this stuff. Yep. And 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 do it over the next, mm -hmm. you know, thirteen years. Bruce, Bruce or whatever. Um, I don't know. From what I have been following through, uh, the seventy-five twenty-five is not a town meeting issue. That was done as a legislative issue, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and the interpretation by the town council is, the, it's, uh, I'll read it. Yeah, please. Uh, in revisiting the matter, I believe that contrary to my prior collusion, the vote taken by the town in 1935 allows the town to impose 75% of the cost of sewer construction on the abutters to the system. The remaining 25% is the responsibility of the town. And, and this is legislative, this is not town vote. Uh, this is, this is right. legislative it action. It was a law passed specifically okay. for the town, which is it's different from state law. It special was a special act. act, okay? Now, it goes also going on, and there again, I'm not an attorney, I don't pretend to, but it basically says the town can, uh, uh, you know, apportion their 25% in any way, shape, or form, which means, as far as I'm concerned, if the town applies for 40% grant, 25, that 25% is their match, plus they've gotten away with another 15 that is gift to the abutters. I don't know if I'd agree with that. But oh. I, I said, I don't, I'm not an attorney, but, you know, because it, it says uh, the remaining 25% is the responsibility of time, and it can utilize any other methods of payment they are authorized to use, which includes grants and everything mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. yep. So I, I'm just telling solid. you what I'm reading. Well, yeah, I'm have, only reading this, so. Yeah, we will have uh, more. You know, it's, it still needs a lot of discussion, it but does. Uh, I don't believe that the 7525 is a town issue, a town meeting issue. I think that well, is done. I would say legislative that action. I, I wasn't inferring that it was a town issue as far as voting to do that or not. It was whether the money uh, was going to be appropriate if the people voted that amount of money down. Yeah. So, and, and if the capital, oh, if the yeah, capital so gets passed or not, if, at town if it's rate. something we should think about and maybe have yeah. a contingency for, it because the reality of it is seventy percent of the town is on the septic system. So, so in other words, if twenty five the twenty five percent came from a grant. Uh, we have to scope that out with. Yeah, we yeah. have to that, that's that. subject to discussion, but we let's you know, on the, the surface it appears that. One last so, question, and, David, if you don't mind, on your projected uh, unit annual cost here. What page Just page you number, for? page numbers on the upper right. You can. What do you see. got there? Twenty-one. 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 Two questions on that. All right. Through 2019, through roughly about 2023, it looks like that's pretty much level funded as far as user fee. Yes. Yes, correct. That's correct. Yep. Before the the, the debt doesn't hit you till. To, right. Till really till 22. Okay. Yeah. So if that's the annual fee for users, then uh, basically for non-users, it'd be 25% of that, roughly? I don't think that that 25% is going to hit you until the blue bar jumps up. So okay. that, when does it start to impact the general fund and the mill rate? Mm -hmm. I think that's going to align with when the blue bar jumps up. But I think okay. that's roughly two and a half years out. All right. I just so people no, no, it's a know. it's a good question, yeah. but yeah. I mean, you don't pay the loans back until the end of the project. Right. Um, okay. You have short-term financing that you'll you'll deal with, but mm -hmm. so it would be our fiscal twenty twenty-four. Right. Yeah. Just 
trying to get as much information out as possible, that's all. Your short-term financing, you can start paying the first month then. Right. Yeah. Right. So, and I would assume that that gets divided, 75% from user fees, 25% from the town fund. If that's the, the breakdown, that's to me, it makes sense. Well, we wouldn't even be able to start the project, I would assume, even if we got a soft yes until 2020, right? Because you get the soft yes. 2020 would be des plant design permitting. Mm -hmm. 21, fiscal 21, 22 would be construction. Yeah. In all likelihood, that's going to hit in 22. We've showed it starting in 21 because we want to be conservative. a little conservative such that, you know, you have some flexibility for bumps. Mm -hmm. But but our so our fiscal would be 2023 20, or 2024. No, fiscal, fiscal year 21 and 22 is the soonest that debt would start hitting the books, whether it be a portion 75, 25 as it's shown. The short-term cash flow financing, I think that has to be ironed out. Yeah, but we're starting fiscal 20. I mean, we're budget we're starting, starting the 20 budget. in July 1st. Right. So presumably for from July till the next, you know, spring is design, minimally nine months. And then you'd be bidding. You'd have construction start summer of 2020, which is fiscal 21. Real money isn't going to hit until a year from there. But Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, listen, this is all subject to... Right, I know, but know, I'm just the, saying that no one... It's not like we have to budget for this in the next year or two. You have done a very good job adjusting your budget over the last three years, your rates, to position yourselves that the initial annual impacts are relatively minimal, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you've gotten away from that first step increase. So. Yeah, my question was we were going to... Uh, I was just thinking of kind of what we're, we're going to need to get to Jeff's team this year for um, capital and are we going to have to plan on like obviously you talk about 15,000 for finance you know, for the for the grants for, um, so that, I'm just trying to think if there's anything that you know other than I know we have money in, in yeah. retained earnings right now that we can do this stuff with um, we still want to put it on the capital get it approved yep. that kind of thing but is there anything else that we need to think about so there's a lot of things that, that will likely start happening quickly. Right. You know, based on this discussion and subsequent discussions. Yep. At the proposed rate of 1175, mm -hmm. it allows you an additional 40, 140k 40. Yep. in capital during yep. the fiscal year. So one of the questions we talked about in the workshop was how accessible is the retained earnings now? Right. And if it's part of the actual fiscal year budget, that that may allow you some flexibility, but that's the order of magnitude. So yep. if you spend 15 on one funding application and let's say everything is green light come February, probably makes some sense to try to advance the engineering right. first and second quarter of the calendar year. So when we get to the town meeting, right. we you feel a little bit better some about numbers, some of the details. Solid numbers. Yep. And we also start to look more shovel ready, yep. you know, for some of these other opportunities that emerge. I mean, a hundred, $140,000 is a lot of money, yeah. but relative to a 9 to $10 million phase, right. you know, we call them soft cost. It's real, yep. but it's, it's, a, it's just an investment to try to move things. But we don't do that yeah. until the soft yeses get louder, right? right. That's, that's the yep. goal. Okay. I just want to address the elephant in the room. The rate payers have paid for all the soft costs relative to these studies for the last four or five years that have been done. And by and large, the 25% should have been borne by the town. Okay? Just so you don't forget that the ratepayers have paid for all these soft costs and all this expansion of the system, replacement of the lines in certain places, et cetera. But, and, Bob, you know, the town it, is paying 25% of, of uh, this improvement and upgrades and fixes that Going should have forward. been addressed years ago with inc with higher rates. So I think it's kind of a wash. So here's anything. the here's where it might Just work out, for, it out. For, for both perspectives. USDA allows us to go back if we get their money and capture everything all the way back through preliminary planning. Yes. So if right. you choose 
let's say we get a 45% grant and let's say the number's nine point whatever million. Mm -hmm. Let's say we choose to recover a few hundred thousand in planning from the last few years. I think then that goes into the category that you were describing of how do you allocate the 25, 75, but yeah. it does allow like a one time, you know, you get Refresh. it at the end of the project from the grant, but you can capture that money. You just have to acknowledge that 55% of it's gonna be financed even though you already spent it and recovered it. So it's a, yeah. it's yeah. an administrative philosophical decision, but that's that, it's a pretty cool dynamic. I mean, yeah. we've used that in other communities to- Well, anyway, I just wanted to put it on the table and not hide it. Bob, I have spent many hours and gas to go to meetings to advocate to get grants, and I've been laughed out of the room with the low rates. So there is a little bit of a wash there. Well. Okay. Anybody else any have a question or a comment? Public or anybody? I just want to reiterate, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, on the uh, sewer system and, you know, I'm uh, promoting my own bill to be much larger, but the town cannot afford to keep kicking us down the road. That's absolutely correct. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, unfortunately, we have to think about the big picture. We can't think about me. Uh, and we've got to get over that, and uh, everybody has a tremendous asset. The minimum rate right now is you know, a little over a dollar a day to have access to a town sewer, uh, which is minimal. People are paying $100 a month for cell phones. Uh, they're paying 8 to $10 a pack for cigarettes. I'm sorry, maybe I'm picking on some people, but I don't intend to, but reality is reality, and this is an infrastructure that's going to, it's been kicked down the road for at least 20 years. You multiply that three, two to four percent increment, it could have been done for half as much, uh, or probably less than half as much 20 years ago, and done on an <coughs> incremental basis each year. So, uh, you know, I, by no means, uh, I don't like to see 1175 rates, but looking across the statewide averages and so forth, it's still a bargain for what we have in this town, and that people need to realize that. Yep. Thank you. Um, did you want to talk just to, because it was floating around the Betterman issue on the, on the street? We, or are you settled with that? No, I'm, okay. I'm good. All right. Um, so we will vote tomorrow to, um, we have to think about this a little bit, and if we have any other questions, Absolutely. we'll get back to you. But we'll vote on this tomorrow and um, let you know. Uh, we probably are going to go ahead and have you put the application together so if you could just look at your timeline and just verify that if we we'll, vote we'll, yes we're we'll voting get it. yes we'll get to it done. make it all, you it always get gets in done we manage for, for meetings and tasks we'll get it done okay great I want to thank you for all your work I really yeah, appreciate amazing. it thank, thank, you. thank your staff Keith I mean and Keith thank Kevin you Kevin and Kevin you guys yep. and, and the sewer study committee all those well, meetings uh, Jack has one other comment Thank you. Well, like I said, it's conservative, but 40% is better than nothing. Mm. 45, I think, right? Or is it 45? Yeah. Whatever. We'll take every percent. We'll take every give. percent. Right. But at least that <laughs> is something. And, and we just, there's no other choice. And, and we have had extremely low rates for too many years, which is where we are, why we ended up where we are. And if there are public members who are listening, watching, um, we do have extra handouts. We'll leave them out, out in the big room, and you can come and take them. We have plenty for Let's go, go Red around. Sox. <laughs> All right. Let's thank go Red you Sox. very much. Yeah. Another 20 minutes. Thank you, everybody. Motion to adjourn. I make that second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.